Split-second decisions in league can be real make-or-break moments for your games. Even after making plays that should put you really far ahead, what you choose to do next can neutralize that lead, or worse, make it so your foes are the ones that end up with the advantage. So today, I'll be giving you a little quiz. If you get these questions right, then you probably know a thing or two about League. But if not, you may need to brush up a bit. Thankfully, we've got you covered here, thanks to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. You know, they're all pretty good at the game and would love to pass everything they know on to you. Getting lessons from them is like training in the hyperbolic time chamber. What would normally take weeks, months, or even multiple seasons can be learned in just a few sessions. So head on over and check things out so you can always make the right choices when you run into situations like the ones we'll be talking about in this video or anything else that SoloQ might throw your way. Okay, now let's get on with the quiz. You know those times where you get a kill in lane and a few minutes later, you're the one that's behind? There's a pretty simple explanation. Wave management. That'll be the topic of our first scenario. Fiora gets a nice solo kill here, but immediately must make a decision. Looking at the wave state, what's the best way to manage it? A. Try to clear the wave entirely and shove it all the way to the enemy turret. B. Trim the wave, killing just a few of the minions and then go for a recall. C. Immediately run back to turret and go back to base. The correct answer here is B. Let's take a look at why. If Fiora went with option A, she would never reach the enemy turret. It's too early in the game, so Fiora lacks the damage and Riven's respawn timer isn't very long. Riven would easily make it back to catch the wave and could make a freeze out of it. This would result in Fiora losing her lead as the freeze would easily swing both XP and gold in Riven's favor over the next couple of minutes. If she went with option C, the enemy wave would be way too big, so it would clear Fiora's next wave and crash into turret too quickly, resulting in her missing out a ton of CS. With a big enough wave crashing, that could also lead to the wave bouncing back to Riven's side, resulting in another scenario where she's able to get a freeze. By going with option B, Fiora is able to adjust the power of the enemy minion wave perfectly. She clears out most of the melees and leaves a few casters, opting to recall just as her next wave is getting there. This makes it so that the enemy wave crashes just before she gets back to lane, so she only misses a single melee minion to tower. With this perfect decision, she's able to turn her solo kill into an even bigger advantage, putting her massively ahead of her enemy and setting herself up to carry the rest of the game. Now, another big issue a lot of people run into is summoner usage. Some people are way too quick to instantly blow summoners, and others hold on to it, saving it for the next game. So that's part of what we'll be dealing with in this scenario. As this play starts, notice that we can see that the enemy Nocturne is ulting. You may not be able to see it, but he used it mid lane. This is relevant in just a bit. Rakan is pathing back into lane, and Misfortune isn't just giving him a free pass. She's quick to start attacking, quickly proccing press the attack and bringing him down to around half HP. But Rakan isn't just taking this beating for the fun of it. He beelines it towards Zillion, engaging on him with his Kai'Sa. Now at this point, who would you target as Misfortune? A. Keep hitting Rakan since he's already too low. B. Swap to Kai'Sa. She's tunneled on Zillion, so you'll try to kill her before she gets him, or at least try to trade one for one. Or C. Neither. Zillion got himself caught in a bad spot, and the first rule of AD carry is to always play for yourself. The answer here is B. Obviously, C does not make much sense. Misfortune does pretty good damage early game, and running away from free kills would be silly. Chasing Rakan would also be iffy at best. He is kinda low, but chasing him would mean running through minions, and Kai'Sa may kill Zillion, then turn and kill you, or just turn on you right away. Either way, it's not a great idea. Trading in bot lane 2v2s can take all types of shapes. If you're against Soraka, you almost always want to focus her, since she can just pump heals into her AD carry. But against someone like Rakan, once his cooldowns are gone, like they are here, it's almost always better to swap targets. Now, let's get to that summoner usage I was talking about. Should Misfortune flash to go for the kill on Rakan here? A. No, she would have to go way too deep and his bone plating just procced, take the one kill and leave it. B. Yes, even with bone plating he's dead to an auto and Q. C. She should just push the wave, then look to dive. 
Hopefully you chose option A here. Like I said, Miss Fortune does do good damage early, but she definitely doesn't have the numbers to burst him down from that much HP with just a Doran's Blade. Pushing and going for a dive is also a risky maneuver. Remember, we know Nocturne just used his ultimate near mid lane. He could easily cover the dive and make it a disaster. Remember, when you're playing AD carry, flash is the most important thing in the game for you to play around. Flashing when you're unsure if you'll get a kill is never good, and it's often even bad to flash for a one for one unless you're doing it in a specific scenario, such as killing the enemy AD carry as a massive wave is crashing into their turret. Anyways, holding her flash pays out dividends here. Not only does Misfortune not look like a fool for flashing for a kill she can't get, but she uses it to escape the gank and she winds up getting the kill on Rakan by turning on him with her ultimate. Okay, let's take a quick breather. Instead of a gameplay related question, we'll mix things up with something lore related. Everyone probably knows about the three Kinku that have been in League of Legends since the very early days. Shen, Kennen, and Akali were released almost back to back to back and have been associated with this order of ninja that has always worked to maintain balance in Ionia. But what's a little bit less known to some people is that Zed also once belonged to the Kinku. He was taken in by great master Kusho and was raised practically as his son. After capturing the golden demon, Zed's mental state declined drastically. This, along with him discovering the forbidden shadow technique, led him to abandoning the Kinku only to come back later to kill his former master, ousting the Kinku from their temple and claiming it for his order of shadow. The full story behind this shows that Zed isn't exactly an evil power hungry guy. His method is obviously ruthless, but his motivation is ultimately to protect Ionia. But this quiz isn't on morals and philosophy. The question here is, whose father was Master Kusho? A. Akali B. Kennen C. Shen The answer is Shen. Zed was raised alongside Shen to the point that the two pretty much became brothers. Shen was also the only other student of the temple that Zed felt was not just his rival, but definitely ranked above him, thanks to his emotional balance. Bonus question, who was the golden demon that eventually wound up breaking Zed's mind? For this one, you don't get multiple choices. Just take a second to answer down in the comments which champion you think this moniker belongs to. The golden demon that slaughtered Ionians for years, turning their art into what he saw as corpses, was actually just a plain old human with no remarkable powers of his own. He was a stagehand in traveling theaters and opera houses, working under the name Kara Jin. Alright, back to the gameplay stuff. Our final topic has to do with some very basic awareness. Silas is topside, taking Scuttlecrab completely uncontested. For the time being, he's strong siding his top laner, which basically means he's just playing around his lane, ready to show up if a fight breaks out. On the opposite side of the map, Jinx and Soraka just took a pretty good trade bot lane against Kaisa and Renata, and Jinx wants to push that lead as much as she can. What would you do here? A. Move up toward Riverbush so you can play aggressive. B. Maintain the lane state, just barely last hitting to slow push the wave in, then recall once the wave crashes, or C, force the kill before the enemy jungler can get here. The correct answer here is definitely B. This is a measurement of map awareness. Most people think of map awareness as constantly keeping note on what's showing up on the minimap. But often, what you really need to pay attention to is what's not showing. Here, since Silas is seen going for the top scuttle entirely uncontested, it should be very obvious that Kha'Zix has a high chance of being bot side. So, if Jinx goes with option A and just walks up toward the river bush, he could already be there waiting and she would die. Alternatively, she could walk through Tribush with Soraka to avoid giving Kha'Zix his isolation damage, but it's still a risky play. It's not like they can 2v1 him with this HP and the enemy Kai'Sa will just come over to assist. Option C, forcing the kill before the enemy jungler can come, is also a very huge unnecessary risk. If she had vision of him on the camp a few seconds ago and knew he couldn't be here, this option would maybe be okay. But she does not have that information. Since blue team has no wards out at all, they have no clue where Kha'Zix is. He could be on Scuttle, just like Silas. Or he could already be sitting in Riverbush, waiting for the bot lane to go in. 
junglers with good awareness will path straight to lanes where both sides get low early since the odds of a follow-up fight are pretty high and they can just swoop in for free kills. One of the most important skills for climbing is risk assessment. You need to be able to very quickly judge the risk versus reward of any given play. Getting an early kill would be nice down here, but is it absolutely needed? Definitely not, and with the enemy jungler basically being guaranteed to be on this side of the map and most likely already very close to the lane, going for any play past the halfway point in lane is practically trolling. Not only does Jinx die for her greed, but she completely wastes Flash and leaves her opponents with a huge bot wave, which they can then thin out and freeze for an even bigger lead as the lane goes on. Unless the other team throws really hard, this should definitely result in a massive lost laning phase for Jinx. And that wraps up our league quiz. As always, thanks for joining me for today's video. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on what's going on in the meta. And if you're really serious about getting better at League, don't forget about our website, ProGuides.com. Until next time, and good luck out there on the Rift.